Hello, and welcome back to Baron's New Vegas Gun Guides. This will be a bit of a one-off episode and an introduction to a whole new type of ammo and a series of weapons, although those will have to wait, as it will also be an introduction to the Gun Runner's Arsenal DLC, as this gun only has generic variants available through that DLC, and I plan to have the next few videos cover GRA additions made to the guns covered so far, as well as the ammunition added in GRA. Now, back to the weapon. We are talking about that gun today. It has quite a strange name, and that's because it's based on a weapon originating from Fallout 1, and was commonly referred to as that gun from Fallout 1 and 2 on forums like No Mutants Allowed, according to Joshua Sawyer. Also according to Joshua Sawyer, naming it after its caliber wouldn't make sense since the 223 round was not considered a primary caliber, at least by him. So moving on to the history of that gun, it starts in Fallout 1, where a farmer named Erwin at the hub tasked the Vault Dweller with clearing his farm. It was just full of raiders, nothing too big. One of the raiders, however, has a 14mm pistol and poses a significant threat to unarmored players, but they are all quickly killed by a well-equipped Vault Dweller. For most, this is the first time that they would get a 14mm pistol, and it seems to be quite the upgrade having the firepower of a double-barreled shotgun, but then, as a reward, they get the 223 pistol, which completely blows the 14mm pistol out of the water. According to the item description, it is a one-of-a-kind firearm, which is true for Fallout 1 in the base New Vegas game. It was lovingly made from a 223 rifle that was modified and cut down to a pistol size. In Fallout 1, the 223 pistol always does more than the 223 firing hunting rifle, and is more in the ballpark of the sniper rifle shooting the same round. However, it's not based on either of these weapons, but an unknown revolver rifle, which in turn was really just an excuse to make a weapon based on Deckard's gun from the original Blade Runner, having double triggers and LEDs, as well as quite a few extraneous parts. This is because the original Blade Runner gun, the LAPD 2019 Blaster, which was not intended to be functional and was constructed from two guns, just looked really cool. It's composed of a Steyr Manchler 222 model SL bolt action receiver and a Charter Arms Bulldog and 44 mag. That gun loses the second trigger, although it has the space in its trigger guard for another one, but keeps the LEDs, something that it shares with the 223 pistols present in Fallout 2, which are said to be a gunsmith's copy or an attempt to copy the original Owen's creation. In the move to 3D, a lot of the extra parts on the Stryer receiver were dropped to clean the profile. Due to a lack of a second trigger, it can be assumed that, that gun is one of these reproductions, but one that has been well maintained and tuned to deliver a bit more damage than the models available in the new California Republic. In any case, whether or not you have played the original Fallout games or seen Blade Runner, when you get that gun, you know it's something special. And to those that know, it's a nostalgic offering. At the very least, it is an extremely unique weapon in the base game, but for those that don't truly care, they can maybe appreciate the extremely intricate and mechanical devices on it for a revolver. In both the early games, the 223 is the most powerful or in the top three most powerful pistols, being on par with the Gauss and Plasma pistols, and only truly losing out to the random encounter special pistols, like the Solo Scorcher or the Alien Blaster. So New Vegas, that gun has some big shoes to fill, but with the addition of cowboy calibers and a more caliber-centric approach to damage, it sadly falls short. That gun puts out damage in between 357 Magnum and the 44 Magnum at 30 points, which is the highest base damage to come out of a gun shooting 5.56 at least, but it's easily overshadowed by other guns. The fire rate is pretty fast at 3 shots per second, which depletes the 5 round cylinder in less than 2 seconds for those that can't do math. The DPS is easy at 3 times 30 equals 90 damage per second, but with the small cylinder and a 2.5 second reload, the DPS after the first 5 shots is only 36 damage per second. Now in VATS, the AP cost is low, but not as low as the semi-auto pistols at 19 AP. This is an efficiency of about 1.6 damage per AP, which is a pretty average efficiency and most players will be able to get a few shots in VATS easily. Now, for aiming outside of ATS, that gun has an average spread of half, but a pretty jarring sight, at least for me. With only a front post and a very round upper barrel, quite like the 12.7mm, more often than not, your gun in sight will completely obscure your target, making long-range shots a real pain to make, if not almost impossible. 
But next is where that gun excels over other pistols, its critical performance. While it only does double damage on a normal crit, like most guns, it has a crit trance multiplier of two and a half times, which, with the right combination of perks, traits, armor, skill books, and vats, means that every shot can be a crit. But for most players who don't min-max that way, it will at least make more shots than usual criticals. For some people, this might have them consider the base damage doubled up, which would make that gun very powerful. But sadly, this still pales in comparison to the crits with, say, the Ranger Sequoia, or sneak attack criticals with any of the more powerful guns. Now, how do you acquire that gun? Even if its performance is less, it's still a unique weapon, and most people would want it as a collectible. Well, that gun, being completely unique in the base game, is not something you find everywhere or find on a raider. It can only be bought, or in the case of some enterprising people, stolen. Although if it's stolen and caught, it will be gone for the game forever. Now, who do you buy it from? Cliff Brasco and Novak. And it is a little bit expensive at 1,750 caps, but it's pretty average for some of the higher end pistols. Now, Cliff does sell and buy everything at a good price if you are in Novak's good graces. And mentoring Jeannie Mae Crawford will give a discount permanently, even if you admit to killing her after the quest with Boone. As far as I know, this discount combined with 100 barter allows you to be selling things and buying things at price, or at least very close to it. If you have a barter of 30 during the Come Fly With Me quest, you can get a key to a storeroom which has that gun in it, as well as the T-Rex toys and rocket souvenirs. Alternatively, for those that really just want to steal it, at night, Cliff goes to bed in an apartment, which is not in the gun store, so you can open the very easy lock and just steal it for free, all for the low, low price of two karma loss events. Now, being a unique weapon, it has no mods, so the price for entry is however much ETH me method costs. For some people, it'll cost nothing. Without GRA, it can only be repaired with vendors and repair kits without the jury rigging perk. But if you have the jury rigging perk, there are cheap repair alternatives, like the silenced 22 pistol. Now, for how long that gun will last, it is 1,120 standard rounds, 1,402 low power rounds, which are the 223 rounds, and a painfully low 370 shots with surplus ammo. With normal rounds, it lasts a good long time. But what is most useful is that the 5.56 ammo has a wide range of utility. Now starting with standard rounds, which are 2 caps per round, each reload will cost you 10 caps. But for the cheapskate, there are two other options. The 2.23 round is the lowest powered round of the 5.56. It only costs 1 cap per round, but you only do 90% damage. But as you see from above, you only do 80% of the normal wear. So for the cheapskate that wants to make the gun last as long as possible, 223 low-powered ammunition is the way to go. It does cost you time in firefights, but it is so much cheaper. For the absolutely ammo desperate, there is the surplus ammo, which in the description states that it's made in large quantities with semi-corrosive materials, which, like the 22 plinking, comes in boxes and a bargain at 100 caps for 250 rounds of ammo. But it comes at the cost. While it does do 115% base damage, it wears the gun out three times faster, meaning two box will last you longer than the entire gun. But that's no real way to treat such a special weapon. Now for the more usual ammo types, we have the hollow point, which is four caps per round, but increases enemy DT by three times. You know, across the board, all hollow point ammo does this. And then finally, we have the most unique ammo type, that gun is the only pistol in the base game that has an armor piercing ammo type. Costing the same as the hollow point at 4 caps per round, it drops enemy DT by 15 points, but it does only do 95% of the damage. Still, that makes it exceptionally effective against armored robots, powered armor soldiers, basically anything that's too hard to crack in the Mojave. Now, a final note before touching on the GRA addition to this weapon is the requirements. Since it is in Novak, most people are a few levels in, and therefore the skill requirement of 50 guns is achievable. But the strength requirement of 6 might still be out of reach for some builds. But it can easily be gained with power armor implants. And also, 
Something to note is it's a heavy gun at 5 weight, which might just be because it weighed that much in Fallout 1. Now for the GRA additions, a first in this series. There is a standard version of that gun added, the 5.56mm pistol. Sporting an arguably better black finish and brighter LEDs, the 5.56mm pistol is a weaker version of that gun in all aspects besides availability. It has the same requirements as that gun, but everything else is just straight worse. It only does 28 damage compared to 30. It shoots marginally slower at only 2.75 shots per second. It does retain a high crit rate multiplier of times 2, but it is not 2.5. In VATS, it's more expensive, costing 21 points per shot. It is less accurate at 0.6 spread versus 0.5, which isn't abysmal, but it is much worse. Now, for the durability, that also goes down, being able to shoot only 870 normal rounds, which equates to 287 surplus rounds and only 1,089 223 rounds. The only saving grace is that it is cheaper at 1,200 caps base value. But due to the limitations put on the DLC interactions with the main game, Obsidian wasn't able to integrate the weapon into enemies' weapons lists, so it cannot be found for free on raiders or anything like that, and is only sold by vendors. Most vendors, in fact, can sell it, with the Vendatron being the obvious high condition seller. A special thing too is we're also going to review the new ammo type added in GRA, and that is the match round. In real life, match ammunition refers to ammo that has had more attention paid to the weight of its powder and casing, and for some people, sometimes the weight of the bullet. What this does is it is the pursuit of identical bullets, so they all shoot in the exact same way. One of my companions is like that. It's exhausting. The match ammo is only available with the hand-loading perk, and given it the recipe, it's a little hotter than the standard 5.56 ammo, which equates to it doing 115% of normal damage, and reduces the spread to 65% of normal, but its value is no different than standard rounds. It can be advantageous to disassemble standard ammo with match ammo with only an 80% reduction in stock, provided you don't buy any of the extra supplies. Sadly, unlike shotguns that we will cover in the next video, the GRA additions for 5.56 firing weapons is fairly low. And that will bring us to our conclusion, and it's bad news. Besides the faster reload, only marginally, and different ammo types, that gun is a redundant gun. Lucky, the unique 357 Magnum does the same amount of damage with the same crit chance multiplier, it has cheaper AP costs, only shoots slightly lower at 2.8 shots per second, and has less spread than that gun even with match ammo, coupled with the fact that it has a much more sharp and angular sight. It can also shoot the same amount of standard ammunition before breaking, which costs the same as 5.56, with the hollow point actually being cheaper. It weighs half as much and can be obtained much earlier in the game if you spec into lockpick and use skill magazines with no gun skill requirement and only three strength needed. Finally, the repair materials are cheaper and are found on enemies unlike that gun, although with jury rigging they do have the same repair list. The only downside I said before is that the reload is slower, but it is interruptible so downtime between shots can still be less than that gun. Now, they both benefit from the cowboy perk, so there's no difference there. All in all, that gun is unique and nostalgic, but not special in New Vegas. It has more plentiful ammo, sure, and with AP ammo, it has a more versatile use, but if you've already been using Lucky, you won't find much of an upgrade in that gun. Maybe the looks and memories will keep you using it, or maybe you might just like the cool reload and noises.